Happy Thursday, Rockers. I'm Karina Gonzalez. And I'm Kim Peterman. We've got a thrilling last Thursday show lined up for you. It is December 7th, 2017. Weather watcher Rohan Jane will give you the regional and big picture forecast for the day. David Maiulo is going to pop in to talk about the Physics Faraday Holiday Lectures. We will learn about the living learning communities with Ariel Leggett stops by. We've got lots to be excited for. Let's wake up, Rutgers. Hello and welcome, Rutgers. It's great to be here on this freezing Thursday morning. We love waking you up with the latest news, events, and weather. Um, and particularly this last Thursday show of the semester. I know. We only have one more Monday show next week, but it's, it's kind of bittersweet. Yeah, no, it's bittersweet. And you'll have plenty of wake-up Rutgers um, back uh, next semester. I know. It's going to be so exciting just to watch you all over again. I'm going to miss the theme song. I'm going to miss everything about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to miss uh, working with everybody um, twice a week. I know. It was actually really fun. It was a really great semester. I love coming on to the team, but I'm actually very excited for holidays. Holidays are around the corner. So, so many cool events that we're going to be getting into. You're going to be speaking to Dave later about the Faraday Holiday Lectures. Yeah, no, it's really cool. that um, I know the Faraday Lectures themselves are really famous and kind of like a foundation of physics knowledge. So it's really cool to see a hear about a holiday-themed version of it. Exactly. And then later, I'll also be learning, because you know how next semester, um, well, of course not for us because we're seniors, <laughs> but all the other undergrads will be getting ready for the housing lottery and picking out their housing. So I'll be speaking with um, Ariel later about the living learning communities. Yeah, no, and that sounds like it'll be really cool. And speaking of learning about things that are cool, let's learn about the weather with our weather watcher, Rohan Rangin. Thanks guys. Good morning Rutgers. I'm weather watcher Rohan Rain Jane here for your forecast. Let's go right into it. So looking at our morning low, we have 29 degrees, which is right around average. Average is 30 degrees for this time of the year. Our average high is 47, which is exactly what we'll be hitting. So it's a very average day. The record in sunrise and sunset are at the bottom of your screen. So this is our radar. We have some clouds right now, but they will dissipate in the next few hours, leaving for sunny skies throughout the whole day and uh, mostly clear skies in the nighttime. Now this is the radar. There's not much going on right now, maybe a few scattered showers in south central Jersey. Very little showers though, and there's some activity going on south of Jersey, but that will not impact us at all. Now this is the radar for the U.S. as a whole. As you can see in the west, there's really nothing going on especially in California where the wildfires are, there's no rain projected for the next 10, 15 days. So it's just going to get worse there. But in the East Coast, there's a lot happening. So there's a storm system that spreads from Mexico and Texas all the way to Maine, as you can see behind me, and that will produce a lot of rainfall and even snowfall. So areas in Texas and Mexico get up to six inches of snow, something that I have never seen before. It's really interesting. It's going to be very cold because of that cold front. And that's why our temperatures have gotten colder over the past few days as well. And over in uh, New York and near the Great Lakes, we have some lake effect snow dropping heavy snowfall, which is pretty normal for this time of the year, about six to eight inches of snow in certain areas. Now, weather headlines, we have an average day today, as I previously mentioned. We could have snow on the way tomorrow night, and we have frigid temperatures ahead. Looking at our high temperatures, we have 47 degrees in New York and Camden campus, fairly consistent throughout New Jersey as a whole. In Oneonta, we have 35 degrees, and in Baltimore, we have 49 degrees. Looking at the lows for tonight, 31 degrees in New York, 33 in Camden, Baltimore, 35. Oneonta, we have 22. It could even hit the teens as far as wind chill goes. Now, today, we have a high of 47 degrees, as I previously mentioned. The clouds will start to dissipate, leaving for sunny skies for the majority of the day. It will be a bit windy, windy though, 10 to 15 miles an hour, so the wind chill will make it feel like it's in the lower 40s. Uh, but for this time of the year, it's not bad at all. Day planner. 
39 degrees at 10 a.m. It increases quite a bit in the next two, uh, next two to four hours. 2 p.m., 45 degrees sunny. By 6 p.m., some clouds start to come back, 39 degrees. And then 10 p.m., we have 35 degrees. So tonight, we have a low of 29 degrees. Right around average, average is 30, as I previously mentioned. Partly cloudy skies, and the winds do die down for calm winds, maybe three or four miles an hour, not much at all. So wind chill won't play a factor. Now, Friday, the clouds start to come in. As I mentioned, we could get some uh, rain and snow mix Friday night. That starts on Friday morning. High of 41 degrees, cloudy skies, winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. And then Friday night, we have mostly cloudy skies again, 28 mile an hour winds and calm. And again, as you get on later in the night, there's a chance for some rain and snow. Uh, if it does come, it won't be too much. It's just scattered uh, flurries, but just watch out for that in the nighttime. And back to you guys. Thanks, Rohan. Unfortunately, the Starks are right, and winter has come. <laughs> Thank you, Rohan. Now that you know the weather, let's see what else you know. When is the Winter Break Residence Hall closing for Rutgers New Brunswick students? We'll find out the answer right after this break. As a commuter, it's hard to make connections outside of class. Tell me about it. Did you know that there's a place for commuters to meet up between classes? Hmm. No, I didn't. That's right. The Rutgers Commuter Student Organization's primary goal is to serve commuter needs and interests while building a bigger commuter community on campus. Located in the Bush Student Center, the RCSA Commuter Lounge has many appliances that help make commuter lives easier, such as a microwave, a refrigerator, computers, and even a TV. The RCSA also holds events. It's the perfect place to relax, do homework, and make some friends. Don't have classes on Bush? Don't worry, there is a new commuter lounge in the Douglas Student Center as well. The commuter lounges are open every Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. and from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Fridays. For more information, visit rcsa.rutgers.edu. Welcome back, Rutgers. Before the break, we asked, when is the winter break residence hall closing for Rutgers New Brunswick students? Now it's time to find out the answer. Residence hall on the Rutgers New Brunswick campus for winter break will be closing on Friday, December 22nd at 7 p.m. And that's really great for students to know, particularly those who live on campus. Um, speaking of things that are good to know, let's uh, give you some more information with our news and events. Standing up to bullies can reduce their likelihood of bullying in the future. In a new study by psychologists Diana Sanchez and Kimberly Cheney, in the journal Personality and Social Psychology Bulletin, it focuses on the reaction people have when they're confronted on their bigoted comments. The study shows that confronting people on their comments makes them more aware of what they're saying, which can help them avoid spreading these hateful comments in the future. The researchers gathered two groups of university students and showed them a series of images and sentences hoping to draw bigoted comments. Most people had no comment or mentioned that the statement was stereotypical. A week later, they brought back the same students and conducted a similar test. Sanchez and Cheney found that the more you make people wear, the more they are consciously trying to avoid bigoted comments. I actually think that's a very smart idea to help. I think it helps just make us all more aware when you're being confronted or being put in a situation where you're seeing ignorant bigoted comments, you think next time, next time you're saying something, you're like, okay, maybe I probably shouldn't say that. Uh, definitely. It's great that um, a Rutgers uh, professors are doing research on such a prevalent and a prominent issue. And it's really good to know that um, uh, for people to have that reassurance that, yes, if I say something to someone, it could make a difference in their behavior, um, exactly. just as long as they make sure they do it in, in situations where they feel safe doing so. Uh, speaking of research, um, that uh, Rutgers research that deals with a prevalent issue, gut bacteria could be a trigger for multiple sclerosis. A new study from Rutgers uh, Robert Wood Johnson Medical School suggests that certain bacteria may trigger MS. The disease attacks the protective coating of in nerve fibers in the nervous system, making it difficult to walk and causing muscle problems. MS has no known cause. In a study published in the uh, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, researchers linked certain stomach bacteria to the genes associated with MS, which puts specific age groups at risk. The results mean that young adults could be more susceptible to the disease because older people have the chance to build up an immunity to the bacteria. 
The director of Ro Rutgers Robert Wood Johnson Center for MS said that the continued research could lead to therapies that would eliminate harmful types of bacteria shown to cause MS progression. That's really great. Um, my grandmother had MS and I saw her struggle for it um, uh, for the entirety of the time I knew her, struggle, struggle with it. Um, and um, I know my dad has contributed his genes to the studies at Rutgers, so it's really great to see that they've made progress and that hopefully they'll be able to prevent um, others from having to uh, deal with the harmful effects of the disease. I definitely agree. The closest person I've probably ever gotten to with MS was one of my high school teachers. And just seeing it, just from an outside perspective, just seeing that she was constantly like out of class because of it and not showing it, it's, it could be very stressful. And I know that it's probably a lot to take on, but hopefully that they're finding ways to be able to de-stress and then be able to fight through those obstacles. But speaking of ways to de-stress, you can fall into the winter vibes at the Yard's Winter Wonderland event. The event will have tons of cool ways for students to de-stress, including taking a photo inside of a giant snow globe. The event is free to all with the free hot chocolate and snacks for all to enjoy. Bring your blanket and footy pajamas because they will be planning to show the movie Elf as well. This is a great way to get into the winter season mood without all the real snow. It will be held at the Yard tomorrow from 4 to 6 p.m. For more information, you can search Winter Wonderland on Facebook under events. That actually sounds so cute, and I would love to take a picture in a snow globe. I think that's actually really fun. I wonder how they're going to make that work, actually. Um, it's probably a giant model snow globe is going to probably be, it sounds like it'll be really cool. And definitely anything where you can sit down and watch the movie Elf is going to be a lot love of fun. Love that movie. <laughs> um, speaking of other ways to de-stress and have a lot of fun, uh, celebrate your hard work this semester before you gear up for finals. Student centers and involvement will be hosting a de-stress fest to thank the student organizations for their hard work this semester. Take a break to cool down before finals with henna, free Zumba, and other fun activities. This event will be held at the Bush Student Center in the Cove from 3 to 6 p.m. on December 11th. For more information, search De-Stress Fest Bush Campus on Facebook. That sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, anything with free Zumba and henna, henna is going to be a blast. This is Kate. Yes, college students, as Kate, I already said previously, college students love free stuff. So when you're getting free henna and free exercise workout, why not? Just go ahead and join. <laughs> exactly. No, it's a great way to deal with stress. Um, and um, it's, it, we're going to be going over some other ways to um, deal with stress um, through the Faraday Holiday Lectures and joining a living learning community um, w in our interviews after this break. This is Kate. Kate never utilized the many great resources Rutgers has to offer. Now, Kate doesn't have a job. Don't want to end up like Kate? Then you should go to University Career Services. University Career Services provides career-related counseling resources, and programs to help individuals clarify academic and career goals, establish career plans, develop job search skills, and make successful career transitions. The mission is to build relationships with alumni, employers, and graduate schools to optimize internship, job, and career opportunities. From workshops and webinars to fairs and other recruiter visits, the staff within University Career Services works tirelessly to prepare students and connect them to the world of work. For more information, visit careers.rutgers.edu. Welcome back, Rutgers. Getting in the holiday spirit during finals can be tough, but one event that can help is the annual Faraday Holiday Lectures. And to talk about it, we have with us David Maiulo, who you might recognize as the fun part of physics lectures. He does all the demos. That's right. Um, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate the invitation to talk about the lectures, yeah. Uh, no problem. It's our pleasure having you. Um, so what are the Faraday Holiday Lectures, and how do they get started? Well, what we do is we have uh, you know, the Faraday shows, which are based on what Michael Faraday, a British scientist from about 1827 to 1860, he did these public lectures, which actually introduced a lot of science concepts to people. So we take our best demonstrations, the best physics, as you mentioned, some of them are a lot of fun. We actually use them in these shows that we do this weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're going to have an hour and a half shows of just a you know, whiz-bang physics theatrics, and a lot of people really enjoy it. Awesome. Um, what topics are you going to be covering in the demonstrations? Actually, we'll be doing mechanics, uh, sound waves, density, um, electricity and magnetism, and we're going to finish with uh, some beds of nails. Nice. Um, what's your favorite demonstration to do in them? Uh, favorite one? I actually don't have a favorite. I think they all affect people in different ways. Um, you know, sometimes the finale is a lot of fun. 
I like all of them, actually. I like how they all kind of reach people and actually introduce all these different concepts to people that they might not actually understand otherwise. Awesome. Um, and I know it's the 20th anniversary of the lecture, so are you yeah, doing anything special? Yeah. No, I think the lectures themselves are special enough. We're recognizing the fact that we've been here for 20 years doing this. I think that's actually really interesting to me. Um, but at the same time, we were just want to give back to the community and give back to Rutgers students and our community here at Rutgers. You know, a lot of this excitement that we can do in physics, you know, and it's free. So why not come on out and see us? Definitely. Um, and is it open just to Rutgers students? No, we actually have quite a few people from the community come in and see the shows. Uh, a lot of kids will be there. And actually, what's interesting too is about an hour before each show, we're actually going to do about um, hand, a lot of hands on demonstrations. You can see cosmic rays, you can see things like um, uh, chaos pendulums, play with them yourselves, play with a little robot, that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of fun things for kids to do, but also Rutgers students should come on out and, and see what your community can actually give you in physics. That's really cool. Um, so you. when are the lectures? Uh, well, we're going to do it Friday night at 7 o'clock to 8.30. Uh, we have one on um, Saturday that's going to be from, uh, I think it's uh, 3 o'clock to 4.30. And then on Sunday, it's from uh, 1 to 2.30. But uh, come out, out early if you do want to catch a seat in the lecture hall because we get about 500 people for every lecture and our place only holds about 3.20. Wow, that sounds really crowded. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and where can people go for more information? Well, the physics department website, of course. Uh, we'll have front and center. We have a little tag for us right there. Um, but also, if you just go ahead and Google, you know, Faraday Lectures at Rutgers, you're going to see us right there, too. Awesome. Thank you again so much for coming Thank in. Thank you, Kim. And, I appreciate it. Um, no problem. It looks like it's going to be a really fun event. It will be. Um, so Ruck, stay tuned, Rutgers. Karina will be right back in a few minutes with an interview that will have you looking ahead to the new year. Bullying isn't just in person. Now, bullying can be over text messages, phone calls, or social media. And it can happen to anyone. Students who believe to be victims of verbal assault, intimidation, bullying, harassment, or defamation should report any incident to the Dean of Students of their college, school, or campus. You can also file a complaint at the New Brunswick Office of Student Conduct at 115 College Avenue. If you or someone you know is being bullied, don't be afraid to speak up and reach out. For more information on bullying, visit compliance.records.edu slash bullying. Welcome back, Rutgers. Before we know it, finals will be over and we'll be gearing up for the spring semester. So one of the first things people do when beginning the spring semester is planning for their living arrangements for the following year. One living option to consider is a living and learning community. So that's all we have Ariel Leggett, Leggett here from Residence Life to tell us more about it. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. Of course. So just to start off, so what are the living learning communities? Uh, so living learning communities, um, they're a self-selected group of students. So students are applying to our communities. Um, and it's an opportunity for them to live and learn together. Mm -hmm. So um, the students take one to three courses that um, they might have an academic interest that they share, mm -hmm. a cultural interest, or maybe a language interest. Um, and we find those classes for them, pair them together, and have them live together. Okay, and so what are some of the living learning community options that we have for here at Rutgers? There really is a wide range. Um, just for residence life um, specifically, it, we have about 17 communities. Mm -hmm. um, so for incoming first year students, we have the Discovery Houses, and those are more academic based, so psychology, business, law and political science, um, and health and medicine. Um, then we have SAS Transfer Nights, which is, which is a STEM based community, and they also have a, um, a communications piece. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have some of our, which we're recruiting for now, um, which are uh, 
uh, French language and culture, German language and culture, uh, Paul Robeson, which uh, explores the African diaspora, and then uh, Latin images, which is the uh, Latino diaspora. Okay, that's actually really, that's a lot of different opportunities yep. that students can take on. Do you find any that are, that are very popular amongst the students? Yes, uh, definitely health and medicine. Uh, we have about 88 uh, first year incoming students in that community, wow. mm -hmm. in Best Hall. Okay, and do are there any um, new living learning community options that are being provided for next year? Well, the, the process of starting a living learning community is one that involves a lot of partnerships. It takes about one to two years. Um, so if a student approaches us or a department approaches us, we just have to make sure all the players are on board and that uh, the courses are selected. We have the, the right recruitment model and everything. So we have some in the works, but for this 18-19 uh, year, mm -hmm. uh, not, none specifically picked out. Okay, and um, how can students get involved in terms of becoming like an employee or a mentor mentor for this? Yeah, so we're recruiting for peer mentors currently. Um, these are undergraduate student leaders who are a real resource for our um, our mentors, our, excuse me, our mentees in the living learning communities. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are usually uh, affiliated uh, by major, the academic interest or the language interest. Um, and uh, like I said, they're just a real resource and it is a paid position. Uh, so uh, that is January 2nd, that application is due and, and you can find that at rulc.rutgers.edu. I'm pretty sure just along with like a lot of the different opportunities they can probably gain from this, hearing that it's paid it probably just makes it mm -hmm. 10 times better for them. Yes. <laughs> and so what are the some of the benefits you feel like they can attain from being a part of this? Um, so uh, for the, um, the living learning community specifically, uh, our students tell us that it really assists them in transitioning to the university, especially like from high school to college, mm -hmm. um, because Rutgers is such a large institution. It is, um, they call it a home away from home, right? So we do our focus groups every semester and that is the information that we get back. Um, but also for our continuing students who already have their uh, group of friends, uh, it's an opportunity for them to maybe get some additional advising depending on the community, because that's something that we have, um, as well as uh, make connections with faculty because we have faculty that are specific to our living learning community. So we there are a variety of benefits. Wow, that actually makes me feel like I should have joined one. I'm a senior, so I probably won't be able to do it. Yeah. So just so students, if they want to join, how can they get more information on this? Uh, definitely go to rulc.rutgers.edu. All right, thank you so much for coming thank today. You. Thank you for stopping by Ariel and telling us about all the fun housing options that students have to, that you have to offer for students. Mm -hmm. Don't go anywhere, Rutgers. We'll be back with more fun to come. Transform free time this winter into degree credits. In just a few weeks, you can advance towards your goals in the intensive, fast-paced winter session. Choose from over 150 courses in a wide range of fields. This winter session will be featuring the course Dracula, Facts and Fiction. No, not that Dracula. Students will learn the actual history of Dracula in the online course. There is also a Winter Session Snapchat Challenge where students can earn a chance to win free RU swag. And students who participate in all three challenges will be interested to win free tuition for a winter course. There are in-person, online, and hybrid courses available. Registration is currently open until December 4th without a late fee, so make sure you register today. Welcome back, Rutgers. Um, it, we've just had two really awesome interviews, um, one with David Maiulo about the um, holiday f Faraday holiday lectures and another with um, Ariel Leggett about um, living learning communities that you could apply to in the spring. I know, that was actually, I really liked that interview. Um, just learning about, especially for my interview, just learning about the different opportunities that they offer here at Rutgers, it actually makes me wish that I would have joined one. As a transfer student, it, it was a huge transition. And so to know that there was an opportunity for that where I can kind of create that home away from home is a really good thing. Yeah, no, definitely the um, transition to Rutgers, um, it, it can be difficult. So having a fun option like that, and even like if you're a continuing student, having a fun option to meet more people and explore a topic that you're interested in sounds really cool. Uh, but thankfully, it, even though we're, we are seniors, we can still have fun and learn at the, the Faraday Holiday Lectures. I know, I actually liked watching your interview as well. And I know you were saying that he does like a lot of the demos for your lectures, so I hear he's a very fun professor. <laughs> oh yeah, no, like he's a super fun professor. Um, uh, but it, like, think Bill Nye the Science Guy just focused on college level physics. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell that would probably be fun. So like for me, I'm probably not one of the best in science, but to have someone who's who enjoys this just as much as I do if I were to be in like the science majors and then he's making the lectures fun for me to be able to be under, better understand. It just makes it all better. Yeah, no, um, I know even outside of classes, um, my brother's Boy Scout troops came to see um, one of the Faraday holiday lectures one year and I know that um, 
it was a big hit with all the age groups. And like when you do, when you have a bunch of six year olds going to a college level physics lecture and they're having fun, you know something's going right. <laughs> That's actually really cool. Though. <laughs> Well, speaking of more things to learn, a little more fun. Are we, will we be having a lot of fun in the snow this weekend, Rohan? Well, hey guys, I'm Rohan Rangin back again for the big picture forecast. So there is an update as of my from my last forecast. Instead of Friday night flurries, we're going to have Saturday night snow. It won't be much snow, but maybe one to three inches of snow. Some rain could mix into it at times, but it will be predominantly snow. Um, as the in the night the temperatures cool down so Friday as I previously mentioned 41 degree high 30, 29 degree low and cloudy skies Saturday the snow as I mentioned with a little bit of rain but not that much uh, 40 degree high 27 degree low Sunday it drops down in the low by about four or five degrees the low becomes th 23 degrees it could even be near teens as it comes closer and then from Monday we have 43 degrees a bit warmer than Sunday and the Sun starts to come through and then Tuesday, we have rain again, 43 degree high, and then the low is 19 degrees. It could be even lower as, the, as it comes closer and closer. So to stay updated on all this winter weather, you can go to channel 23.1 every 15 minutes. You can go on Facebook, RU Weather Watcher. Follow us on Twitter, at RUTVWW, hashtag RU Weather. Or you can go to our website, weatherwatcher.rutgers.edu. Back to you guys. Thanks, Rohan. Um, it's really it, um, it, the weather is an exciting thing. If, you, if the up, it can get updated right f during the show, like I d it, just seeing the snow move from Friday to Saturday, that was <laughs> surprising. I know I'm kind of like back and forth as to whether I'm really excited about snow or I'm not excited about snow, but I'm actually right now very excited about snow. So yeah, we can have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we'll be right back um, after this break. It's important to stay safe and be aware of your surroundings on and off campus. Need some tips on personal safety and how to look out for others? Yes! Well, you're in luck, because Knight's Watch Safety Program is coming to Rutgers. The goal of this campaign is to focus specifically on physical safety, provide programming to change the misperception that Rutgers isn't a safe place, and educate students about the resources on campus. Here's some useful tips to stay safe. Lock your doors at all times, even when you're just going next door. Most thefts occur in less than one minute. Get to know your neighbors and people on your floor and building. This will make it easier to spot strangers. Take precautions when walking alone on campus, especially at night. Keep personal belongings in view while in class, the library, lab, etc. Don't update your Facebook or Twitter status with your location on it. Don't put where you live or any other personal information on your profile page. This makes it easier for thieves to track you. To learn more about the campaign, be sure to visit staysafe.rutgers.edu. Welcome back, Rutgers. Um, as we said earlier, this is our last Thursday sh show of the semester, which also means it's our last show with Rohan Rain Jane. I know, this is so, this so sad. I want to miss Rohan. I know. Um, hopefully, we'll be working with him again next semester at some point. Um, but uh, because it's his last show, uh, we wanted to ask um, Rohan, what are your, um, what's your favorite uh, Wake Up Rutgers moment from the semester, and what are you doing over winter break? Well, my favorite Wake Up Rutgers moment, I guess, would be holiday season in general because it's hard to choose a specific time. Everyone is so festive. It makes it so much easier to wake up early in the morning and come here. It's a lot more fun. Everyone's much more uh, excited about being here. So I definitely enjoy that. And as for winter break, I'm going to be working in winter break. I'm actually going to be moving. So that'll be a fun process, moving to a new house. Um, and I'm just going to be getting ready for next semester and enjoying this one month break as much as I can. Uh, what about you guys? Uh, well, I'm mostly going to spend my winter break writing, uh, specifically my thesis, because I really need to get that done. Yeah, for the vast majority of winter break, I'll actually be here in New Brunswick still, working with RUTV, but then I have some just like family days set up. Like I'm going to the spa right before New Year's. I think it's very, very necessary, because, you know, after finals and working, I'm going to need to relax. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, my family normally has like a little trip for the week after um, Christmas, but I think this year we're not doing it because things have been so stressful. 
um, for them and me this year. Um, but well, Ruckers, um, that'll do it for our last Thursday episode. Um, hopefully you enjoyed spending your Thursdays with us as much as we did with you. For more events happening this week, you can get to you can go to getinvolved.ruckers.edu or areyouevents.ruckers.edu. Follow us on Facebook by searching RU Network or follow us on Twitter by searching at Wake Up Rutgers. Share what you are thankful for with us. We love hearing from you. We will be active on Twitter during winter session to continue giving you the latest, uh, latest and greatest news events and weather. Thanks again for tuning in to Dr. Mayuo and Ariel for stopping by. I'm Karina Gonzalez. And I'm Kim Peterman. Have a great weekend, Rutgers, and we'll see you Monday for our last show of the semester.